What's up guys, today we're gonna run through how to make black and white photos in Lightroom. Let's go. So before we get started, I just wanna chat for two quick seconds about my Facebook group, Pixel and Lens. If you're not a part of it already and you wanna learn photography and video, go over there and join. It is free. Just answer the question so I know you're a real human who actually wants to learn. The reason why I bring this up is because I did a poll a couple of weeks ago and the majority of you guys wanted photo editing tutorials. So that's what I'm going to give you today. We're gonna to talk about black and white photography in Lightroom. There's a million and one ways to do black and whites. There's a bunch of different types of looks. So today I wanna to show you guys how I edited this photo I took of Chris. So first of all, let's talk about gear. Some of you guys have been asking lately on our Instagram photos, what was the shot with? So I figured I'd just tell you. This photo was taken on a Canon 5D Mark III with the Canon 50 1.2. It's my personal favorite lens. You don't have to spend all the money on gear. There's lots of cheap 50 millimeter lenses out there, but that is what I use for this photo. So let's pop open Lightroom. And guys, if you're new to Lightroom, let me know, cause I can do a full rundown tutorial on how Lightroom works, what all the buttons are, what all the things do. Let me know in the comments below if you guys wanna see that tutorial. This photo is straight out of camera. I have cropped it, that is all. We're gonna be comparing this to the final product, which is this black and white. I was kinda going for like that filmy look, a little bit grainy. Uh, the blacks aren't so dark, they're a little bit dusty. So I kinda cropped it to where I I like it uh, and that 16 by 9 aspect ratio to make it look a little more cinematic. So the first thing we're going to do is convert it from color to black and white. So up here under treatment you can just click black and white and it will convert the photo for you. So as you can see the shot is black and white. It's okay. It could be greatly improved and stylized depending on how you like it. We can up the contrast and make that super punchy, drop the highlights down a little bit, maybe even drop the shadows. But today, like I said, we're gonna go for that filmy look. So first thing I'm gonna do here is drop my exposure a little bit. So let's just drop that down 55-ish. That kind of just brings the highlights down. I thought it was a little bit bright. Um, I want to kind of flatten the blacks out a little bit and make it a little more contrasty, but I don't want the whites to be completely clipped off. I'm gonna keep an eye on my histogram up here. I will do a separate video on the histogram because we can deeply get into that. There's a lot to talk about, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so I've got my exposure adjusted. I'm gonna just boost up my contrast. Uh, I do want this to be a little bit more contrasty, so I'm actually gonna drop my shadows down a little bit. Highlights, my whites are still a little bit hot for my liking, so I'm just gonna drop those a little bit. I'm gonna adjust my blacks a little bit more. I'm digging the way that's looking so far. I'm gonna boost my clarity a little bit. You guys have to be very careful with clarity because it very quickly can become too much. It can make the skin tones look really dirty. Uh, sometimes that works if you're going for that kind of gritty look, but for portraits, especially when you're shooting women, um, you don't want to use that too much, especially on the face. Clarity sometimes works well for like landscapes and things like that, just to kind of make things pop a little bit more. Not always recommended, so use your discretion. Next, we're gonna come down to the tone curve. I will do a separate video, but basically, we have your shadows on the left, your highlights on the right, and if you just put like a basic like S curve in here, you can adjust the contrast. If I make a point down here on the left, you can see I'm adjusting the darks, and this point up here will adjust the lights, and then anything in the middle will be adjusting the midtones. So either point on the corners, that's your white point and your black points. Uh, basically, what I'm gonna do here today is bring up the shadows a little bit, and then I'm gonna take black point and actually lift it up and this is going to bring the shadows and kind of flatten it out and kind of give that like dusty look again this doesn't always work you might want to have your black super crushed down uh depending on the photo i will do either or there's a number of different ways to do black and whites but this is just how i chose to do this photo so i'm gonna just play with this a little bit i'm gonna make a point here so there's a bit more kind of contrast in the blacks again i'm going for kind of like a vintagey look this is a recreation of the photo i've already done so the look might be slightly different than what i had done originally but i just want to show you guys how i got that look. I'm pleased with that. So if I turn off the tone curve, you can actually see the difference. So if I turn it off, it's very contrasty and the blacks are very black. And when I turn it on, it's kind of flattened out a little bit more and the blacks are kind of mushed and brought up a bit. So next I'm going to scroll down all the way to post crop vignetting. And uh, I like, depending on the photo, to add a bit of a vignette. I think that with black and whites, sometimes it adds focus to your subject. As you can see, the more I add the vignette, the darker the edges are going to get. So you don't want to go too much. You don't want it to look like a harsh 
black circle on the outside of your photo. So again, use your discretion, um, play with it a little bit and see what you like. Now, as I mentioned, I wanna go for like a filmy kind of retro vintage kind of look. So I'm actually gonna add grain to this image. This image originally is not grainy. It was shot at ISO 100, so it's very clean, it's very sharp. If we zoom in, you can't really see any noise at all. So let's add a little bit of grain. So I'm gonna come down here to grain. I'm gonna just boost this up a lot. I'm zoomed in here so you can really see the before and after. So this is with the grain on. And if I turn it off, then the grain is off. So as you can see, it just adds a little bit of grit to the photo. And you don't have to do this if you want more of a cleaner black and white feeling, just leave the grain completely off of it. Okay, let's zoom out and see how that looks. Cool. So I'm happy with the way that looks, but there's still some highlights in the background that I find are taking away from Chris as the subject. So I'm gonna use some gradient filters to kind of darken the edges. This is where you guys can really play and add dimension to your photos by darkening edges, darkening skies, adding different types of adjustments to your photos to really bring it to life. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here to the gradient tool, the graduated filter M on your keyboard, and I'm just gonna kind of pull in from the, the right side here. You can adjust the angle by just mousing over the center line until your arrow comes up and you can adjust the angle. Or if you mouse over the button circle on there, a hand comes up and you can actually move the physical mask to where you are happy with it. So I'm just gonna move it a little bit close to Chris. I want this to be a little more dramatic. The exposure and the highlights down a little bit. I'm gonna pull that in a little bit more. And I'm gonna bring one from this side as well. Depending on how far you bring out your handles will determine how gradual or how abrupt your gradient is. So the closer the lines are together, the more abrupt it's gonna be and the further out they are, the softer that line is gonna be. So I'm gonna make sure that's a little softer. I'm gonna bring that back a little bit. I'm gonna drop that exposure a little bit. I'm gonna actually drop the highlights because I really want to affect the highlights more so than the shadows. It's actually a little bit too much, so if you want to adjust it, you can go back in, just click on the circle, and I'm going to bring up that exposure a little bit just so it's maybe minus five. So it just gives like a little bit of depth to the shot. I'm gonna adjust this one as well. I find it's a little bit too dark. So that is how I've done this black and white conversion. Again, it's a little bit more stylized, not so contrasty, a little more dusty vintage look, but I kind of like it for this photo. If you want like a slightly different look, let's just reset this green by double clicking on the slider. You can just take away any adjustment by doing that. Back to my tone curve. I'm gonna clear this so you can clear them by double clicking on the dots and bring that down. If I wanted to make this more of like a contrasty look a little bit cleaner, I would just maybe point curve, medium contrast, just crush down the blacks maybe a little bit more. Photo editing is all about using your discretion and looking at it and seeing if you think it looks bad, it looks weird or whatever, if it's too much. But again, all in the eye of the beholder, eye of the photographer. So if you like it, to say there's anything wrong with that. Again, the highlights are a little hot here. I'm just gonna drop them down, but now we can see if we bring these two shots up side by side. We've got the dusty vintage look on the left, the contrasty look on the right. There are two different black and white looks for this photo. I prefer the vintage look. For other photos, I would probably prefer the more contrasty look. So again, it's up to you what you pick to do. You don't have to follow this tutorial exactly. I just wanted to give you guys kind of like a guideline, show you how I edit my black and white photos, and then maybe you guys can take some of those techniques and tweak them and make them your own. If uh, you want more tutorials like this, let me know in the description box below what you want to see. And also don't forget to join the Facebook group. I have the link in the description box below. We have weekly challenges where we kind of put up a theme and you guys can kind of shoot photos based on that theme. Basically just to kind of give you guys something to shoot if you're not really sure what to shoot. And actually we just recently, two weeks ago, put up a black and white theme. So if you do want to go back and shoot those black and white photos and post them in the thread, feel free. Just please read the rules of the group before you post. Okay, that is it for me, guys. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We will see you on the next one. So sweaty right now, like, <laughs> dead. We have air conditioning, right? But in my office, we have like a million hard drives and computers and, and shit. And so it's like just super duper hot all the time and it's freezing in the rest of the house. So that's fun.